Hey guys, how's it going? I'm making this video to respond to some comments that were left on my recent video, Dichotomy versus Trichotomy, and I think there's some good questions and I would like to make some clarification on here. And so instead of answering in the comments, I'll just make a video so everybody can see this. And recently I've had some people leave comments on various videos where they want to ask questions and I spend my time giving the scriptures and stating things and then it seems like they completely ignore it and I feel like I've wasted my time. So I think responding in a video here would be a good thing to do. Christian Gomez said, Hi brother, question. I will be completely honest. I never quite fully understood the concepts of trichotomy despite being a member of an independent fundamental Baptist church for over five years where I even preached. Growing up from childhood, I always thought man was simply body and an eternal soul dichotomy. But in the independent fundamental Baptist church, it was pushed that man was three parts, body, soul, and spirit, although I never quite grasped that particular concept. Correct me if I am wrong, but is the independent fundamental Baptist trichotomy simply as follows. Man is born with body, with both a physical body and, a, and an eternal soul along with a spirit that is quickened or made alive at salvation. So when a person is saved, he or she becomes a full man, body and soul and spirit, three parts. So I wouldn't say that uh, you know, they, the trichotomists teach that man has a body, soul, and spirit, but that the spirit of the unbeliever is dead. And so they are fully a man, but uh, their spirit is just inactive or dead. And so that's why I stated some verses that shows that the spirit and the unbeliever is very active in rebellion against God. And um, that God even stirs up the spirit of these evil kings. And so continuing here, yet it was also taught that at death the body stays behind and eventually deteriorates, which is observably true, but the eternal soul goes to either heaven or hell, this too I agree with, but then what about the spirit? Where does this quickened spirit go at death, according to the independent fundamental Baptist trichotomists? If the spirit goes up or down with the soul, where does it state that in the King James Bible? Well, there are probably some verses that they could use that the Spirit goes upward, because I used a verse that's that, in Ecclesiastes that says, you know, basically the spirit of man goes upward, the spirit of beast goes down into the ground, something similar to that. But, I mean, it's true what you said. There's really not a lot of clear uh, clarification or definition for these trichotomists. Um, so, you know, they just kind of make things up in a sense. I agree with you, brother, that there is definitely much more and clearer supporting scripture for the dichotomy view as you outlined in your video. I recall that in the Independent Fundamental Baptist, another argument in favor of trichotomy view was that because in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, man is made in the image of God, Father, Son, and Spirit, three persons. Thus, man is also three parts, body, soul, and spirit. However, I don't believe Genesis 1, 27 can be used to justify a trichotomy view because nowhere in that verse or chapter 1 of Genesis, do we find anything about man having or being made three parts? Exactly. Perhaps a better interpretation of Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, in light of both Colossians, or Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, and Hebrews chapter 1, verse 5, is that man is made in the image of God. Man is made to look like Jesus, who was the express image of God. And by look like Jesus, I simply mean with a physical humanoid body. That could be one way of looking at Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, rather than using the verse to support trichotomy. Well, I want to show here on the website that I have, uh, I don't know why I showed that. Here it has, uh, from the Schofield reference notes, on Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, I think. And here he says that man was made in the image and likeness of God. This image is found chiefly in man's triunity and in his moral nature. Man is spirit and soul and body. And then he uses 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, which is a uh, the proof text for the trichotomists. And then he says, spirit is that part of man which knows, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, which allies him to the spiritual creation and gives him God consciousness. Soul in itself implies self-consciousness. So here he starts teaching trichotomy. Schoolfield taught that man being made in the image of God means that he was made triune in his nature. 
and I've said that this is a false analogy because God is three persons in one being, not three parts. And, uh, you know, I think that Schofield definitely popularized this uh, teaching, trichotomy. But he also says that man being made in the image of God also has to do with his moral nature. That I would agree with. That's what I think, that man being made in the image of God has to do with our moral ability to know right and wrong. It also has to do with our ability to reason, which is kind of the same thing, I guess. But, you know, animals don't reason, and so we have a higher consciousness um, that God gave to us. So that's what I think it means to be made in the image of God. It doesn't mean that man is, has three parts. Uh, so another thing that I want to mention here is uh, there was a lady here that left a comment that says, when he sends his Holy Spirit, we have three. But we have three parts. So I want to say, first of all, that the Holy Spirit is a person, not a part. Okay. Um, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, there are three persons in one being. Now, we're talking about man having a body and a soul. Those are parts. A person possesses parts, okay? A person is not a part. Uh, so, the Holy Spirit is a person. Jesus said, you know, he would, you know, that he would uh, comfort us. Um, so, I think that some of the uh, confusion coming here, too, also has to deal with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, which I've talked about before. In the past, and uh, you know, I really love the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. It's more something I'll talk about a lot more, I'm sure. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit, or the fact that Scripture speaks of the Spirit being in us, does not mean that it's actually you know in us or a part of us that's in our body. Um, it's just a figurative language relationship with the Holy Spirit in such a way that unbelievers don't. You know, we have communion with the Holy Spirit, and so we. You have to understand that God, um, all three persons in the God.